are you all doing? What we're getting up to in this video, I hear you cry. Stripping down these carburetors, replacing all the jets, needle valves and gaskets, and putting them back together. And then, hopefully, fitting them back onto this baby, and even more hopefully, starting this baby up. So let's get on with it. Sorry about that, just trying to put a bit of action into my videos. Have you got a tiger in your tank? No, just 250 quid. Right then, so I'm going to be honest with you, I've already done this carburetor because I did film it, but the batteries went flat on the microphone, so I'll show you the next one. And I'm not going to lie to you again, I've been around with the impact driver on all the little screws. So they're all nice and loose already. A bit closer up on the, uh, the carburetor repair kit. So anyway, let's start this one. Like I say, I've cracked all the screws. It's just reminded me, I was just getting ready for the spring and I've just looked up there. So I have lied to you already, because I said I've done this one. But I haven't done it really because I forgot to put the spring in. What a dickhead. Oh, gently does it. They're bloody long enough, aren't they? Jesus. That look okay. Better do. Don't want no splits. Cost a fortune. Put that to the back. Oh, I forgot one. <laughs> that was bloody tight. Thought I'd done the one with the impact driver. Uh, that one wasn't too bad inside, so hopefully this one's the same. Too bad. A little bit of crusty crust in there. Try to get the float out first, just push the pivot pin out. That over there. Lift the float out. And the needle valve. The needle valve seat is a 10 mount. Where are we? Right, I need an extension bar for this one because that pipe's in the way. Fuel pipe. Well on do. Yep. So let's whack that on there. <laughs> I didn't think it was going to work then. Yeah, I'll unscrew that. away helicopter. And as you can see there's a little filter on the bottom and a little washer. And we do get all that in the kit. Let's do the main jet first. It always goes on down the old lot. Let's get a 7mm spanner. It's just the right size. Because we do need to get this main jet out because we've got a new one. Here we go. Over there. Get that off there. What's it tightened up again? Screw that out there. Put it over there. Then we can do the pilot jet. Pull that out there. I guess it's a bit uh, dirty and corroded around there, so I'll just get a wire brush. It's only a copper wire brush. Do the 
same on the top. Just give it a good clean where there's corrosion. Make sure it all seals up properly when you put it back together. Okay, so then we can get the air gun. Give it a bit of a blow. And here we go, and we can get our new parts. Okay, so we've got our new needle valve seat. And there you are. Little filter that goes on the bottom. That should just push onto there. Like so. Then we've got the uh, ceiling washer. We just screw into there. My 10 mil socket on there, hopefully you can see. Pinch it up. Then we can put our pilot jet in. We don't have to put it in now, you can put it in any order you want. Pinch that up. Then we need the old uh, main jet body. Make sure there's no blockages in that. Blow it through. these at your skin. If you blow that in your skin, you could die. Well, I can screw that back in there. Sorry about that big fat hand. I pinch that up with a little Joanna. Then we want the new main jet. Tighten that in there. Okay, then we want the uh, float. Just give it a quick exam and make sure there's no holes in it or anything. We can put our new needle valve onto the tab. <laughs> Come on Johnny, you can do it. Push it on there. Go on, get down there. That's it. And we can push the little pin axle in. There we go. Make sure we're in line. <laughs> goes the compressor. Wait till that goes off. There we go. Push the pin through. There we go. Make sure it operates properly. And then I've checked the manual and the height of the float should be 9mm. And I've set my Avernia to 9mm. 8.99 which is near enough. So with these you have to uh, sort of let them swing open and then just let it, don't hold them upside down like that, just hold them so that swings open and then just let it rest where it rests naturally. Then get your measuring tool and make sure they're 9mm. That is way out like the first one. Just get a little toothpick or something and put it underneath the tab on the float. Just give it a little bend upwards. It's a 
drop it down. That's near as damn it. So that's that. So now we've got to get the old gasket out. Out, out. Get the old gasket out. This has got all that sealer stuff on it as well underneath. I think this has been in there since the factory put it in there. Pull that manky gasket out. Yes, that's definitely seen better days. So I get rid of all the uh, old gasket glue from the factory fitting. Why brush it out? And for all those of you that are crying out, just get some cold cleaner on it. I don't use it. It's number one if you do get it on the rubbers or any rubber, it'll make it swell and stretch and then when you try to put that back in there, it won't fit. So it'll be a nightmare trying to get it back together. Number two, if it gets in your skin, gets under your pores and does all sorts of nasty things to your skin. And number three, you have to spend money on it. There we go, that will do fine with my new gasket. Careful with the new gasket. There we go. There we go, make sure your gasket's not going to fall out stays in exactly the space it's supposed to. Carefully plonk it on the carburetors. Like so. One screw in there. One, one screw at the top there. One screw at the bottom. Now we can loosely pinch the screws up. And lock them all down. There we go. Now we can go back to the top. Back to the wire brush. Make sure the cap is nice and clean. we can push the diaphragm and that back in, making sure the little eye is on the needle just there. If they don't want to stay in position, like well, mine doesn't, just going to have to wing it. But make sure you get the tab on that as well at the top to go with that. If you just plonk it on gently and try to guide everything into position like so. When you take it off you'll find that everything's lined up where it's supposed to. So yeah basically just use the cap to flatten it out and force it into all its crevices. Don't forget to put the spring in. Make sure that little tab is lined up with that little tab. This spring is bloody long. Make sure the diaphragm is located properly on there. 
gently try to smooth and everything out. Just tip the carburetors over to make sure the faces are up perfectly. There's no lips. If there's any gaps, then you know the diaphragm is trapped. This looks perfectly fine, so let's push a screw in. Loosely pinch it up. Put that one at the top. That one at the bottom. Pinch it up. It's fine. I want. Okay. Then lightly lock them down. it. Two carburetors done. I did take the cap off that one and put the spring in so that's done as well. So you haven't got to see me do the other two. So I'll be back in a bit. Okay then so they're all uh, done all back together. Uh, I've just filled them up with fuel doing the bench test. So far so good. No leaks. So I'll leave them for a few hours to see if there's any leaks. Right then, that's been a good couple of hours now and there's no leaks whatsoever, which is perfectly splendid. Okay then, so it's finally time to try and get the carburetors on the pike. I do have a bit of a problem. As you can see these uh, boots, see if we can focus. Yes, as you can see these rubber boots have uh, seen better days. In fact they're all like concrete and rubber. So rather than spend 50 quid on a new set, I always had these spare in one of my drawers. I did buy them for the divvy but they were too big. So hopefully they're not going to go to waste and I can use them on this so let's try and get these cut to size and see where we go from there right then so I've got these four made up I've used all the old clamps I've got clamps at the back so these are nicely secured the thing I'm worried about at the moment is that all these are going facing straight forward like that but as you know on the uh, on the original ones they're sort of going off at an angle like that because normally the carburetor bank is on a straight line but for some reason these carburetors are like a banana shape so anyway let's try and I'll put some uh, rubber grease on there and try and force the carburetors in first I've got to put the air box in as well and then the carburetors so I'm sure that's going to be great fun. Anyway, let's get started. Right then, let's try and get the air box in. Make sure all the pipes and the uh, wiring bits are out of the way. <coughs> I did have all these cable tied up nicely, but uh, I tried to get the box in and it won't go. So I've had to take the ball off. There is the air box all nicely cleaned inside and out. Right, I think that's it. Yep, that's it. So that goes like that, but hopefully we can pull it back and have a bit of wiggle room for the carburetors. Right then, here goes. Uh, I've had to put the cables on because there's no way I'm going to get them on when they're inside there. At least we can use the cables to try and drop them into place.
I need some light because I can't see bugger all. Come on, stop being difficult. Oh, we're going, we're going. Right then, I'll get them two middle ones on first and hopefully I can get a bit more pressure on these end ones. Try to get these clamps to light up. Try to tighten this first clamp up. Just try and tighten the baby up. Got that one. Yeah, that one's in nicely. One up. Right then they look and feel like they're on there, good and proper. So let's try and hook the cables up and I've got to put the battery back in because been on charge and I don't know what the idea is with this but this one you can slot the cable through and screw it on like that but the other cable you can push that through there but it can't the only way to screw it on is by turning the old switch gear God, how crazy is that? So, more fun of games with the cables. I might have to get longer cables because of the handlebars, but uh, we'll just see, see how we get on. We'll screw this one in first because we've got to turn the old switch gear. He says, come on, line the threads up, here we go. <laughs> cool, I don't know. What a design. Let's take that back a bit. Get the other cable. That one through. And this one just screws in like normal, like you would think they would both do. Right then, where's the twister? So now we've got this little tab. Hopefully you could see it in there. Just dobbed a bit of black paint on it, pushed it on the handlebars where I wanted it to go, and then pressed it on the bar so the black paint made a mark. Hopefully you can see that little dot just there. That's where the black paint was. I tried it with a marker first, but I didn't like that idea, so I did a bit more precision. So I did the black paint dot. So I'm just going to drill that hole to stop the switch gear from spinning round and failing on the MOT. Right then, here goes. They're not in there very tight, so I better not put too much pressure on. This drill ain't too big. In fact, these bars are quite thick metal, so I don't think I have to go all the way through. I might just try that actually. It's quite a deep hole. Let's just try if that's going to work. Okay, so that should be it, just there. Ah, there we are. <coughs> Perfect, that'll do. If switch gear just spin round, they'll fail it on the MOT. The explanation they give 
if your bike's falling over and you go to grab your handlebars, your bike will still fall off because your handlebar grip will come off. So they fail you on your MOT. Yeah, that's perfect. Just a slight movement. So let me get the bars back on and then we can get back to where we was. Okay then, so we've got the bars back on. Let's get the switch gear on. Find that uh, hole. There we are. And if we put the uh, Oh, screw in first. There we go. Let's hold it in place while we screw the screw in. Okay, so that's that screw. Screw two. Okay, pinch it up. That's nice and tight. Uh, I have got a problem with the throttle, obviously. Of course I have. The carburetor clamps that I have put on down there, this one, is just in line. See so when I twist the throttle. This carb is just touching it, so I've just got to undo that clamp a bit and move it out of the way and tighten it up again. And then we should have full throttle. A bike like this, you've got to have full throttle, haven't you? Well, there we go, full throttle now. Right then, let's get this choke cable on. Hook it under there. Push it through there. Lift it under that little tab. Tighten the little tab up. And then have we got choke operation? I had that the way. Oh yes. Let's get some petrol in this. Oh my god. Let's get some petrol in it. Got to get the battery back in first. Oh, it'd be nine o'clock tonight before I actually press that stop button over there. And that's what I want you to do. Start. Right then, battery's in. Let's try the ignition. Oh yes. Right then, now we can get some petrol in it. Right then, because we're dealing with really expensive fuel, I'm gonna do this really safely. So all I'm gonna do is stick that up in the air like that. Push this funnel in there like that. Stay boy, stay. And simply put some petrol in there. I think that should be enough. Right then, let's stand back. Oh my god, I'm pooing myself. <laughs> right. Shall we go for it? Yeah, come on. Make sure the kill switch is off. That's one main thing. Uh, make sure the choke is on. It's another thing. Okay. Oh, deep breath. Is that everything? I'm sure there's no bare wires hanging about. Let's go for it. Did you hear that pop? Oh my god, my belly's turning over. My belly's doing all summer salts. Here we go.
Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, speechless. Shit. Okay, it's June the 27th, 2022. The time. The time is quarter one in the afternoon. And now we've gone really dark. I see you in another life, brother.